Good morning, all of you. So today we have Harsha Bansal with us. She is a BCom graduate from Saint Xavier's College, Kolkata. She is a natural analyst at WTW and has more than one point five years of experience in life industry domain. So today she'll be guiding us how to build a CV from scratch, and this is especially for all the freshers that we uh, have with us here today. So uh, please keep your notepads ready. And jot down all the points that she uh, shares with us today. Thank you so much, Harsha, for joining. The mic is all yours. Thank you, Shivangi. Good morning, everyone. As you all know, this is Harsha Bansal, and I'll be taking you all through what uh, what goes through in building a CV from scratch. Let me know if you can see my screen. Is it visible? Yes, it's visible, Harsha. All right. Thank you. So the contents that we'll be covering today are: what is the CV? Importance of a CV? Contents of a CV that makes an impact? Do's and don'ts in making a CV? The best practices in CV writing? Format of a CV? Action words for a CV that makes an impact? And some frequently asked questions. So before I begin, I'd like to ask you all. To volunteer and answer, what do you think a CV is? Anybody? Any guesses? Anything? Be it a phrase or one sentence. You all can unmute yourself and answer the question. I think everybody's sleeping. That's okay. I think Harsha, uh, uh, they are writing in the chat box. Krishika is saying a uh, summary of our academic and professional journey. A brief about you, your education, your achievements. Yep, that's all correct. So a CV is a document that represents our life story in a short, crisp yet concise form. So as Kanika mentioned, it is about our educational. Our academic, our work experiences, our life, in a very short and concise form. The other thing is, it is a lifesaver during an interview, as it enables you to leverage on your CV to steer the interview questions in your favor. So, what happens is, when we mention details on our CV, so the interviewer goes through our CV, and the questions that are asked during an interview are based on whatever information we have provided in our CV. So, we tend to provide all relevant. And important information so that we can steer the course of our interview. All right, moving on. What is the importance of a good CV? So, if you want to get that call from your dream company, your CV should be good enough. So, most employers do not shortlist you if your CV is not good enough. If at all they do, they place you at a position which is with a very small pay package, and they assign you non-challenging work, which I'm sure most of us would not like to accept. Uh, moving on to the contents of a CV that makes an impact. These are very general and very uh, very basic things which I know most of all most of you all would know. We'll discuss each of these in detail in a later section. Name, email ID, and contact number. Age, gender, place of current residence. Career objective is what most of us tend to miss, which is very important. Educational, be it academic qualifications or professional qualifications, work experience. Since most of us are freshers here, we'll only talk about our internship experiences. Achievements, work-related and academic. Extracurricular activities, say for example, publication, leadership positions in school, college, etc. Participation in sports, organizing events, NGOs, MUIs, and any other such uh, curricular activity that you have been a part of. Any other interest, be it uh, doodling or anything you do aside, extracurricular achievements again, like winning an inter-school competition, etc. Other information which is optional, which I tend to avoid in my CV, but you can of course include, is uh, father's name, place of residence, availability, place of posting. 
So these are information which I would include if I have some free space available in my series, but would otherwise avoid. This is absolutely optional. Uh, any questions up till now? If there is any question in the chat box, I cannot see. All right, I'll assume a minute. Do's in CV building. Anybody would like to say something that we should include? Very basic. Except so ring. Yeah. Okay. The first is key in all your ideas as for the format and then delete redundant information. So when you're making your CV for the first time, please do not focus on the length of the CV. So what we do is key in, uh, jot down all the points that we want to include in our CV, and then later come back to editing and removing the redundant information. Next, focus on formatting, spelling, and grammar, which is very important. An improper CV gives an impression that the candidate is unsuitable for even being shortlisted. Say, for example, there is a very basic grammar mistake so my interviewer or whoever is the receiver of my CV would not make a very good impression of me and would not select my CV. So this is very, very important. The third point is CV should be tailored with the description of the job that you're applying for. With the advent of AI and APS tracking systems, what happens is CVs are scanned through some software and they look for the keywords that are necessary for that job that you're applying for. So if you mention some um, key skills and you place them strategically in your CV. So your CV gets easier to, for shortlisting. The next point is document name for your CV should be first name, last name, dash profession. Say for example, Harsha Bansal dash actuarial analyst. Uh, the next very important thing is CV should always be shared in a PDF format. Why I say this is because sometimes formatting errors might creep in due to differences in software versions that the interviewers or the ones who receive our CV use to open and read our CV. So say, for example, I have shared my CV in a MS Word format and somebody is using some other version and somebody else is using some other version which do not have the features that I had used in my MS Word version. So the CV format might get distorted. So to avoid this, we'll use a PDF format which is universal. Next point is always place two references ready for your candidature, either from professors at college or people who are placed in a good career path and you know well. Very good example would be Praveen Sashiranguji. And you might also include some professors at college, etc. This is, I think, for a later stage when your CV is shortlisted when you have cleared the interview. They look at these references to final uh, to give you the offer letter. The next point is whatever you write in your CV should be supported with a story which can be elaborated in the interview. As I had mentioned previously, whatever you write on your CV will lead to the course of your interview. The interviewer is going to ask you questions from whatever is written in your CV. So when you're asked questions, it should be that you're able to back it with the story and you're able to answer those confidently without any hesitation and lies. Otherwise, it does not make a very good reputation uh, if you're not able to explain it well. Uh, next, professional skills that you developed over the years should be highlighted on the CV. So be it uh, MS Word, MS Excel, or any other professional skills that you've acquired or developed over the years should be highlighted if it's important for the job. So if you're applying for a content writing role and you're very good at MS Word or presentation, you should highlight that on your CV. Similarly, for an analyst, say for example, you're very good at some software, Meet Excel, R, Python. So you should highlight that on your CV. Use action words while documenting your work experience and extracurricular activities. Action words we'll come to in a later section. 
but this is very important for highlighting your extracurricular activities and work experience. For fresher work experience, by work experience, I mean only internship experiences. Um, the next point is mention the respective years for all achievements, extracurricular activity. So it does not look good if you have not mentioned the year in which you have actually achieved something and if it's not in a chronological order. Mention your LinkedIn profile via custom link or QR ID. These days, LinkedIn profile is a must. I'm sure everybody must be having one. So when you're uh, mentioning your LinkedIn profile on your CV, you can um, copy in your LinkedIn ID link and paste it on your CV so that it's easier for the interviewer to go through your LinkedIn profile. Always mention the date in your CV at the end. So before applying, you can obviously change this date and then submit your CV. Any questions, any doubts? Harsha, we have some questions, I think, in the chat box. So no, just one question is there that if internship is not in the actual, can we mention it in the CV? Uh, how relevant is it to the job you're applying for? Say, for example, you have done some role which, uh, say, for example, data analyst role. You have uh, collated data and used some charts to analyze and explain which might be relevant for the job of an actuarial analyst. So you might want to include that. But say, for example, you have done an internship in content writing, which might not be relevant for actuarial analyst. You might also want to exclude that from the C. So like I mentioned, it should always be tailored to the description of the job that you're applying for. So every time you apply for a job and every time there's a different job description, you'll have to change your CV accordingly. Right, so I don't think there is an, uh, any other question till now. Okay, okay, so how about volunteering uh, works? There is one question, how about volunteering uh, activities should be put in the CV? Yeah, so that comes under extracurricular activities and that is a very must. If at all you have any volunteering experiences, you should obviously include them in your CV. That makes a very good impression. Was that answered? Yeah, so I don't think uh, we have any questions till yet. We can move ahead towards the end. We can have more questions. All right. Moving on to the don'ts in CV building. So uh, these are something that which I would like to exclude from my CV. Write CV or curriculum writing as a heading in your document as it wastes valuable space and gives the bad impression. So never mention uh, like the the heading or the topic of your CV, like Harsha Bansal CV or something like that. We tend to avoid that. The next don't is send CVs which have a lot of empty space. So say, for example, you have uh, constructed a CV which ends up being a 1.5 page CV. So either I'll do is include some other information which might be relevant and elongate it to two pages so that there's no blank space. Or what I would do is reduce some information, I'd filter content and reduce it to a one page essay. Otherwise, what happens is the interviewer, it demonstrates that the candidate does not have enough information to put it on his or her CV. Hence, he or she has left it in the middle. So we would avoid that. The next very important don't is you do not mention everything on the CV as you might think that uh, you will not be able to come up with something during the interview. So what happens is we leave some for the interview so that the interviewer has something to ask us. We have something additional to add during the interview apart from the CV. So please do not elaborate as much as you can in the CV. So we tend to write in a very crisp and short manner in the CV. The next very important point is mention full permanent address. This is due to two reasons you might waste valuable space in the cv and the second there might be some security concerns due to which we, are, we might want to avoid writing our permanent address on the cv you can simply mention the city maybe but not the full permanent address uh, the next very important mention strengths and weaknesses in your cv is a must is a strict no because this is something that most interviewers tend to ask and you should be able to talk it out there and not mention it on your CV. Use uh, fancy fonts or word art anywhere in your CV. Please do not do this. 
use very subtle colors like black gray very light blue but not very colorful and fancy this is something that the interviewers do not like it is not very catchy to the eye so please avoid using fancy fonts or what art there is a we'll come to it later there is a there are a few fixed fonts that we tend to use in the professional world so it is always advisable to use those and not very fancy fonts and what art the next very important don't is mention a lot of achievements on your cv it tends uh, say for example you actually have a lot of achievements and you want to mention them all you find all of them relevant and important and you do not want to exclude any but you will still have to filter and mention the very important ones first otherwise it sounds like you are very egoistic and proud about your achievements and you are boasting about them during your interview or in your cv so we tend to avoid this right achievements also in a very short and concise manner moving on to the best practices in cv writing as mentioned above proper spelling grammar and formatting is of utmost importance like i mentioned fancy fonts should be avoided and the professional fonts used in the corporate world are arial or times new roman a single font should be used throughout the resume in fact i think in any word document or say in any presentation or any professional document that you submit a report or a summary we tend to use one single font throughout the document so you should follow that in cv writing as well the font size should be between 10 to 12 the standard font size is arial 10 uh, the standard font name and font size is arial 10 you can maybe increase it to 12 but not more than that different font sizes can be used for headings and regular text so say for example your headings are in the font size 12 and your regular text is in 10 that is okay but not more than that your cv should be minimalistic in nature as i mentioned no fancy fonts no colors very plain simple text no pictures etc cv should only contain a brief description of your life story not the complete story again reiterating it should not have everything it should have as much required so that the interviewer can question you on that and you have enough to speak about it the purpose of a cv is to get you the interview call so cv is the first step in applying for that dream job the cv will only help you in getting the interview call cracking the interview is a separate ball game altogether that is not what you can achieve through a cv what you can get to is the interview CVs should be typed professionally and be proofread to ensure all grammatical errors are avoided. Like I mentioned, grammar is very important, so make sure before you sub, after you have drafted your CV and before you are submitting your CV, it is proofread from somebody you trust or somebody senior who would provide you with constructive feedback. All right, moving to the length of a CV. Ideally, any CV should not exceed two pages. since you all are freshers i would expect your cvs to be a one pager this is again not a hard and fast route if you have a lot it might move to two pages anyway uh, a one pager cv for a fresher should be sufficient cvs should not have any empty spaces either one or two pages no in between like i mentioned before a 1.5 page cv demonstrate that the candidate does not have enough to mention on the cv hence he left hence he has left it in between that should not be the case please please the word or uh, leaving your cv pages in between either one complete page or two complete pages should we move on to the format or uh, am i going too fast are there any questions no i just think so. uh harsha your pace is perfect moving on to the format of the cv So center aligned first thing on your CV should be your name. Like you can see, first name, space, last name, all in caps. To the left, right after your name, what you can include is your email address, your contact number. You need not write email address and then your email address. Simply, Harsha Bansal at the rate gmail dot com. Simply your contact number. Age, gender. I would not tend to include age here. however most people do gender is okay and current residence again i would only mention the city of my residence and not the entire address 
so why i say i would not like to include my age here is because in the optional section i mentioned date of birth wherein i would write the year of my birth and i would not mention my age here so you can do either either you can mention your age here or you can mention your date of birth at the end next very important and very uh, nicely read by the interviewer is your objective statement so this should be something very catchy very unique you should not copy it from some random template or a very thrown around example of an objective statement you should have your own unique statement this is something that will make an impression and obviously the first impression should be very good to get you shortlisted for that interview call so please draft an objective statement that actually aligns with your objectives so this is a very vague statement Uh, to give something back to the society, you all should be at least a two-liner or two-sentence long objective statement. You'll find examples of it on the internet. I would say use those examples, take references, but make your own. All right, moving on to the third important thing: professional qualification. And these things, as I mentioned, should be in this order exactly. Professional qualifications. year from year to degree name from institution name to the left so say for example 2017 to 2020 bcom honors from st davis college kolkata graduated in 2020 with 80% marks similarly for academic qualification i'm sorry this was professional here should this should include your include your uh, internship experience and not the education which i talked about that would come here in under academic qualifications 2017 to 2020 become honors from st davis college graduate in 2020 with 80% mark the next um requisite skills are computer skills in any job so you can include things like programming languages c++ java excel ss whatever you are actually good at please do not falsify information do not lie here because they might ask you some questions which you may not be able to answer and then it does not look good on you so only that much you should only mention that much as much you are aware and you are very confident about moving on to achievements do not sound very boastful mention uh, things that you feel are most important and in this format mention the year first awarded with the award name for exemplary performance during quarter 1 financial year 2020 at your company similarly you can maybe talk about your academic uh, academic achievements 2020 awarded with rank 2 in bcom honors at st davis college of art again extra curricular activities like you like somebody asked about volunteering activities this would come under extra curricular activities So your interests, uh, if you've written any journal or any publication for the college, say for example your uh, publication was titled Hope, Hope at um, what is the journal name? I think Insignia or whatever, and a brief description of whatever. This is just a vague example I'm giving. Your publication title at whatever your journal name is and a very brief description about your publication leaders leadership positions during school college etc if you have a lot of them i would uh, tend to avoid mentioning all just a very important one one or two max not all participation or awards in sports management fests or ngo social activities or events be it participation or be it winning you can mention both of them and extra curricular would include sports management fests your social activities ngos muns all you can mention all of these even if you have not won you have only participated you can also include those moving to others uh, father's name mr x y z or place of permanent res residence availability from when you are available to take the job references this will again be very important after you have been shortlisted they go through your cv for the references and contact them to get a very brief background about you 
and this is again the other section is entirely optional the date of birth would also come under other and after all this after you've included all this you can maybe add a line saying i hereby declare that the above information is true to the best of my knowledge and belief harsha bansal date uh, august 2020 All right, that was it about the format. Any questions, anybody? Ah, uh, Harsha, we have some questions here. So, someone is asking, mentioning percentages, ah, uh, about the college degree, um, uh, or any other degree that we have mentioned. Is it important to mention the percentage? If you have a good percentage, I think you should mention it. And if it's not very good or very worth mentioning, you can avoid it. Okay, so like if it's above uh seventy, then we can mention it, right? Or maybe above eighty. Right. Okay. Um. Then one more question is that um, the CV format which you have shown over here, uh, can we have like some other format which can be acceptable, or it should be always like this? Yeah. So I'll come. That was one of my questions in the frequently asked question, as you can see. is the format provided in this document the only format to be used for cv the second question so ideally i would say yes as this format is very simple it covers all the points and looks very professional however uh, with the ongoing developments and uh, you know they're evolving every day so you can have a very simple cv which should only cover these three points it should be simple it should cover all the points and it should look professional so if your cv With a different format covers all these three points should be good enough. So, uh, like uh, nowadays, uh, we see a lot of CVs where uh, they make these tables uh, instead of writing it in lines, they make these tables, right? So that is also acceptable. Yeah, that okay. looks good in fact. Okay. Uh, one question, which is I think very very important, uh, whenever we are we are asked to share the CV, maybe through mail, especially, so we have to include a cover letter, and is it always necessary? If we are not including a cover letter, then what should we mention in the mail while attaching the CV? I think that is a very important question, which all the freshers generally don't uh, are not able to you know draft a very good mail. So can you just uh, explain us? how we can do that yeah so first thing is if it is explicitly mentioned that you have to attach a cover letter along with your cv you should have a good cover letter and attach that if you do if it is not mentioned and you still have a good cover letter you might want to attach that and if you do not have that and you still want to say give a very brief so the cover letter also contains a very brief about you in a different format not in the way a cv is made so you can maybe write a very short paragraph about yourself your qualifications and you can include that in the body of the email itself so that is very important if you are only attaching your cv you should always uh, back it with something so that even if somebody does not open your cv does not even want to look at i know i'll be sounding very harsh sometimes it does happen that the interviewers or the receivers of your cv do not even open download your document and open it. but say for example they go through your uh, three four lines that you have mentioned in the email body and those are very catchy and attractive so they might want to include you as pa as part of their hiring process so that might lead to them downloading your cv and going through a cv and getting you the interview call so that is very important you should always write a very short and crisp introduction in your email body when attaching your cv okay so cover letter uh, so questions are there on the cover letter which we'll cover in some other session uh, because again it's a entirely uh, new topic uh, however i just want uh, uh, harsha if possible can you share uh, with us like in brief what exactly and how exactly should we write uh, the mail uh, the three four lines and what exactly can we talk about like how many papers we have cleared or should we mention the college if you have just graduated the name of the college what exactly should be mentioned in the mail so initially you would obviously write uh, with the salutation hello sir hope you are doing well etc and you will begin with your introduction first say for example you are straight out of college you do not have any internship experiences to talk about 
you will only write i am uh, x y z i have graduated from this college in the year this if you have very good marks and say for example if you are a rank holder you might also want to include that in a single statement so this is again all on your writing skills soft skills and your grammar how you can include a lot of information in one single line so say for example i would write uh, i am harsha bansal a grad a 2020 graduate from sanjeevas college i have been pursuing actuarial science for the past 2 years and i have cleared 7 ct papers whatever your current qualification is and then if you have any internship experience again in one line and then you can move to your objective statement because that is something that they want to know from you whatever your purpose is why do you want to get this job why should they select you so this should all be in a very very short form and it should include all the basic points that you want to convey to them all right so one question uh, that should we attach our certificates with the cv on in the mail no it's an absolute no for the first time this is something that they ask after you have been shortlisted and if at all they ask then you should attach you should not go ahead and attach. say for example you have 10 achievements you have mentioned five of them on your cv it is not advisable to attach five certificates for the same i mean you have written you trust yourself and they should also trust you if at all you are lying they will get to know later as well so there is no need to give proof of your achievement until and unless they ask that is at a very later stage before your offer letter and all not in the first stage itself um harsha i think this is a very common question that we usually get um what if i don't have any internships or any uh, extraordinary co curricular activities during my college or any uh, or extraordinary achievement throughout my college or school life then exactly how can i build my cv should it just contain the number of papers that i have cleared or how should i build it up because uh, it may be just of a half a page how should i make it presentable so that is absolutely okay if you do not have any internship experience if you do not have any extra curricular activities to include on your cv what you can do is start to gain them because if you do not have anything why would the interviewer select you in the first place why would your cv get shortlisted when there are hundreds and thousands of people applying and they have more qualifications than you so first thing i would suggest is start doing something that you can put on your cv and that makes you stand apart from the crowd and at the current date if you do not have anything to improve you can maybe state it in a very uh, subtle and gentle manner that i am learning and i am looking to learn say for example in your um, computer skill section uh, you do not have any sorry, you do not have any uh, any of these skills but maybe you can say beginner level c++ or learning excel so that the interview is convinced that even if you do not own them you are ready to learn them that is something everybody wants nobody knows everything but you should be always willing to learn and grow with the organization with the people you work with so not having something is not a uh, not a very bad thing but you should obviously look to learn and have something that you should be able to include on your cv half a page cv is not advisable not sufficient you should do not make it very obvious by include in increasing the font size or increasing the spaces that is again not a very good thing to do but i would say include lines so that they can trust you and they can uh, like have faith in you that you'll be learning if required to um i think we don't have any further questions i just can add one question over here um harsha how should we work on the objective portion that is the first thing which the interview uh, viewer will read so how should we build it up like if you can just yeah. share maybe some uh, brief I idea have, yeah sure i have actually a few notes on every section of the format which i can maybe share it with you guys after the session in a pdf format 
If that's I okay. think you can just go through maybe some of it, uh, like some important yeah, ones, sure. like objectives. Uh, I think I believe is very important, and the um, computer proficiency is also very important. Yeah. Okay. Then I'll talk about the objectives first, and then the computer skills. So, an objective statement should be a short and concise description of what you are, what skills you bring to the table, and what you want to become in the long run. Like I told you. Uh, this is something that should depict whatever you are you want to be in a very very short manner so this statement should not be more than 30 words or three lines and should be in center alignment the objective statement should be center aligned unlike the other which are left aligned so i can give you a few examples Performance-driven professionals seeking opportunity to apply finely honed analytical skills, financial techniques, and accounting knowledge to safeguard assets and improve investment decisions. This is a very, uh, very basic and very common objective statement. Please do not copy this. This was just for example. Make your own objective statement. It does not necessarily have to use these uh, very very high class words you can use simple layman terms but this should be true to what your objectives are and should align with what you actually want to achieve in future i can also give you a template so to utilize my uh, say for example your any qualifications strengths skills as a position title uh, to utilize my Excel skills as a data analyst in any type of organization. Or you can say a position as a position title for your company name, allowing me to develop my strengths or skills in so-and-so domain. Or an opportunity as an actual analyst in a insurance consulting with emphasis in, say, investing decisions or statutory valuation, etc. These are templates I can share with you after this session as well. So this was something that every, I think every receiver of your CV, every interviewer goes through first. So this should be a very catchy statement and should not ex include any false statements. Is that okay? Or any other clarifications or questions on this? I don't think we have any questions. It was uh, nicely put. Um, uh, if you all have any questions, please write it down in the chat box so that uh, Harsha can take it up right now. So one question is, um, is exaggerating some of our experiences a big no? Jitesh, what kind of experience are you talking about over here? Uh, Harsha, how important is it nowadays to have computer skills on our CV? Because um, obviously, um, I uh, th generally, there is one of the requirement, uh, job requirements that you should maybe knowing SAS, maybe knowing uh, Python. So how important it is to put it up in our CV? And one thing, uh, one a very uh, general question which we face is that uh, how do we assess ourselves that we are still at the beginner level? or maybe intermediate level, how should we assess that? Uh, so the first question I think was related to how important computer skills are and whether those should be mentioned on your CV or not. So right. nowadays you would know that every job, job description has some requirements or qualification section and they explicitly mention uh, good knowledge or expert level knowledge in so-and-so software. So only if you have those, please mention it on your CV. If you do not have those and you mention it on the CV and apply for that job, they will get to know and it will not lead to a very good impression. It will harm your reputation and will you will lose out on your current and future job prospects. So we only mention whatever we are good at. Computer skills these days are very, very important with AI and everything being uh, data driven. Nothing is done on pen and paper. So you should have good computer skills. And especially in the actuarial world, you would know we use a lot of softwares like SPSS, R, Excel, Profit, and a lot more. Companies like uh, insurance consulting companies like WTW, EY, and a lot the 
RAF, a lot of these companies use in-house valuation software. They do not expect you to know those, but basic ones like Excel, R, Python are something they would expect you to know. Even of VBA, it is used a lot these days. So if you have good knowledge in these software, you should mention these on your computer skill section in your CV. And do not boast about your skills. If you are very good at those, mention um, expert level or intermediate level. That is absolutely OK. And coming to the second question, how do you assess those is only via uh, I like when I had to assess these, I took these uh, quiz on uh, LinkedIn. So we have LinkedIn quiz, LinkedIn questionnaires on each of these softwares. So you can go and take that test and assess your level. I'm not sure I'm aware of any other softwares or platforms where you can take these tests and assess yourself. But as of now, I can say LinkedIn. I can maybe answer this question later after giving it a check. Anybody yeah. wants to so add here? I think LinkedIn is a very good platform wherein we can assess and generally uh, we assess our level through that only. Uh, so that's a good platform. One question that we have over here is that, is it expected to have a certificate of a particular computer skill or small projects on the same is enough? Um, these certificates are again for your own good. These give you self-satisfaction. No interviewer or no company would ask you a proof of your qualification in such software skills or this is not for proof proof but okay you have completed this course say for example your bcom degree okay you have completed your degree you have a certificate similarly you have complete you've completed this excel course or say python course you have the certificate nobody is going to ask you for it but you should have it hand handy if at all asked for it it should not be the case that you call yourself an expert in Excel, but you are not one. And having that certificate means you actually are, and then you have earned that. So it is good to have. It's not mandatory and compulsory to have one. OK, so I don't think we have any further questions. Um... So someone was mentioning about how is exaggerating some of our experience a big no related to some internship role that we have done before or maybe some volunteering we have done. So uh, is it like exaggerating a very big no? That is what they're asking. Yeah, exaggerating is always a big no. Like I mentioned, you do not mention all of it on your CV. Exaggerating is going one step forward. That <clears throat> you should never do that. So you should mention it in a very, very short format so that the interviewer is inquisitive about it. Say, for example, <clears throat> I'm sorry. Say, for example, you have been volunteering at an NGO for past three years. So if you mention one line, volunteer at CRI for the past three years, the interviewer will be inquisitive to learn more about it. He or she will go forward and ask you questions like, what kind of volunteering did you do? What kind of work were you involved with? What was your position as a volunteer? I'd cry. And that that is how you lead the course of your interview. So you should also have something left for the interviewer to ask, and you should give good answers then, rather than mentioning them on your CV or exaggerating them before. If you mention a lot of it, he, he or she reads it already. There'll be nothing to, forward to ask, and they'll not have uh, something more new to learn from you. So you should leave that for the interview and not on your CV. Harisha, someone asked about ATS uh, CV. Uh, so can you briefly highlight importance of ATS with regard to CV building and how can we uh, how we can make our CV ATS friendly? So ATS is basically application tracking software, right? So um, if you can highlight about or something on that. So ATS, uh, as you mentioned, application tracking software is used by most companies these days. So you can uh, download formats of ATS CV and uh, cover your CV in an ATS format so that no company, uh, no CV is rejected by companies that only use ATS. So most companies use ATS. Despite that, they also go through CVs which are not ATS. 
but it is always advisable that your series it gets compliant so that it's not rejected in the first place it's not even open or looked at so if you have a good ats compliant cv it's always a yes ats does not mean a very separate format this this could also be a an applicant application uh, tracking system compliant cv what you need to do is uh, download an ats cv from the internet you will see that they have a few boxes in the academic qualification section in the professional qualification section and they do not have i think other section so these are something that uh, you would like to include or exclude from your ats compliant cv nothing very major but yeah you can make your cv ats compliant that's a good these days so is it very much relevant in the actual field i'm um, not really like the places that i had applied to did not i did not find my cv getting rejected due to not being ats compliant but of course you never know which companies following which companies accepting applications only through ats mode or not so it's always good to have why leave one reason to get your cv rejected you should not you should leave no stones unturned to get that interview call from your dream company so you can make your cv ats compliant it's not very compulsory compulsory but it's good to have so someone is asking should we put our pictures in the cv like i think i've seen picture. a few yeah i think i've seen a few here towards the right uh, beside your name that is good to have but i personally did not like it so i never placed my picture in this if you're attaching a cover letter with your cv you can include your picture in the cover letter should we also put the linkedin profile a link on the cv yes like i mentioned always mention your linkedin profile via a custom link or a qr code so that the interviewer just needs to click or scan and he can reach your linkedin profile and linkedin profile is a very elaborated version of your cv so make sure the two coincide so after going through a cv if that interviewer clicks and goes to your linkedin profile and something very different is mentioned there so it it does not make a very good impression of you so please make sure your linkedin profile and your cv contents coincide and include a link or a qr code not just your maybe your profile name or handle one more question is there should we make use of a resume or cv building websites or it's better to make it our own it is good to take references it is good to go through them like you can like i have this uh, ppt i have a few pdfs i can share with you those you can take references but always build your own from scratch it is always advisable to make your own if you take if you take a copy and then edit it you will never have something to add on your own which is a must which is a no okay harsha any other uh, important points do you want to mention over here um one thing i would like to mention is please do not falsify on your cv if at all okay you have uh, written some false information it helped you get that interview call you've also cracked the interview you got the job say for example two years down the line the employer or your interview gets to know that it was a false information or falsely reported on your cv and you had mentioned this in your in, in your interview and that leads to a harm in your reputation it also harms your current job prospects and your future job prospects so you might lose out on a lot if you have false information now and that gets caught later you cannot get away with false information easily um yep, so i don't yeah so i don't think we have any further questions over here harsha um so any anything else you want to add on we can share your uh, ppt with all of you and the notes which harsha has prepared for us so i can share it with all of you later on thank you so much harsha for making such an amazing uh, ppt and sharing so much with us today and we look forward to having you in future thank you so much uh,
I don't think we have any further questions, so we can end the session over here. Thank you so much, Arsha. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day. Bye.